What is up guys, Fi here, and today we're going to be looking at the most underrated champions in each role, I think, for solo queue. So underrated for me means they aren't played that much, but they're still a really good champion, they have a lot of impact, kind of a hidden power, I guess. The thing with all of these champions is they have pretty high win rates, pretty low play rates, and they're also pretty easy to have a high impact in the game. So you don't have to be amazing at these champions to really carry hard with them. So we might as well just start at the very top of the map and we'll work our way down. So we'll start with the top lane and we're going to be looking at Wukong. And Wukong is one of these champions I've mentioned before. He kind of hangs around with being played sometimes, not the other times, but he's actually really strong still. He does a lot of damage in lane. He does a lot of damage in team fights. He has a pretty good laning phase actually, but he has a really good team fight. That's kind of the big thing with Wukong, right? His ultimate is designed to have a huge impact in a team fight, but when he's just 1v1, his ultimate actually really hurts as well. The new Black Cleaver is really good on him because his ultimate will stack it really quickly and make your ultimate do even more damage. But one of the biggest things is that a lot of the meta top laners now are pretty tanky, right? Well, Wukong can just build flat damage because he doesn't need to get tanky with his passive. His passive grants him armor and magic resist for nearby champions. So in the middle of a team fight, he actually gets pretty tanky just from his passive, meaning that he can afford to build full damage and still kind of get away with it. So this is something I'm going to try and do in every one of these videos from now on. People have been commenting saying, well, it's all nice knowing who's good right now, but we want to know what they're actually good at, what they're weak against, and how you win with that champion. So I've kind of covered his strengths already, right? But he's actually really weak to knockbacks, so like Janna, Lee Sin, and unfortunately Janna is actually really popular right now. The other thing that he does struggle against is getting past really big front lines because if they can stop you getting to the back line then you're pretty much useless like you're not going to be killing tanks in team fights your job is just to get to the back and kill the carries really quickly. So how do you actually win on Wukong, right? Well, you can win your lane, I've said already, you just build damage and you kind of snowball from there. But a one good thing that you can do is you can roam down to mid, you can roam to dragon and surprise people when you clone into fights. In team fights, you really want to try and come from the side. Like you stealth in, you ult the back line and then you just sit there and laugh while you walk around. So next up, we're going to be moving on to the jungle and Volibear is really good right now. Volibear really benefits from this whole Cinder Hulk health meta because most of his damage comes from his W. His W damage scales with health, so the more health you build, the more damage you'll be doing. He has okay clear, but he has good ganks and he has good damage in those ganks, but the biggest thing is his passive. His passive is just so strong right now. It's hard enough to kill tanks in this meta, right? But why don't you try and kill a tank while he's healing himself? So just as a few examples, like you never have to worry about ganking 2v2 because if you do get counter ganked, you're very rarely ever going to lose that because you can heal back up and you'll kill the enemy jungler before they kill you. Another thing is like if you ever get invaded, your passive will make you last for so long that your teammates can come and help you and in early skirmishes, it's really hard to actually kill you before your team arrives. Now that's not counting his team fighting, right? Volibear's team fighting is really good because he can absorb a lot of damage with his passive and still dish out a ton as well. What he's actually weak to most is Ignite and it sounds weird it's just a summoner spell right but it stops his passive and it makes him actually really vulnerable. The other thing that's really dangerous for Volley is good kiting champions. So things like Vayne and Callista are really hard to deal with especially with a Janna because if you can't get onto them with your Q then you have no other way to get a hold of them. So how do you actually win with volley? Well, you gank a lot early and you pick constant small skirmishes, small fights. Because of your passive, you survive forever and you can really bait people and turn those small fights around. When you're in team fights, you want to just be running at the back line and absorbing as much damage as possible. Like you do a lot of damage and you can probably kill people, but at the very least, you should be using your passive to absorb as much damage as possible and let your team kill the enemy front line. Okay, so for mid lane, we're going to be looking at two different champions because I think there are two really distinct different playstyles in the mid lane right now. You have the assassins and you have the poke champions. So I'm going to give you one assassin and one poke. So the assassin is going to be Fizz. Now, Fizz used to be a monster, right? Do you remember when he was like pick or ban because he'd just literally dump on your entire team? Well, his W a couple of patches ago was changed back to how it was before, meaning that AP Fizz is back. So he does a crazy amount of damage like before again, but this time he has his ultimate, like the DFG ultimate. You know, it does 20% more damage if it actually hits a target, which means you can nuke people so easily. 
because he's obviously a fish, he's very slippery. I feel dirty for that joke. But he's really hard to lock down and kill. He doesn't need many items to do damage, which means he's really good at roaming early. And it's a good thing he is slippery because he's really weak to lock down. Like if they ever manage to catch you, then you're in big, big trouble. The biggest problem with Fizz is that he is actually quite hard to play. Like he has a weak lane phase, so you have to survive until you kill someone. And a big part of his lane phase is actually recognizing when you can kill someone. Because if you take those chances, then you'll snowball yourself really hard. So how do you actually win on Fizz? Well, you survive your lane phase and you roam whenever you can. It's basically that simple. You don't ever want to use your E to go into fights mid game because you need to be using that to kind of come in and out and dodge a lot of damage. So on the other side of the coin on my Poe champions, we're going to be looking at Zerath. So Zerath does a crazy amount of damage with Ludens. A build I love using right now is either going Morello or Athenes into Ludens and you will absolutely dick on everyone. He has a really high range and he can poke before fights start. He can easily even kill people before fights start with his ultimate as well. In theory, the reason that he's so strong is because you don't ever have to fight. It's always going to be 5v4 because you take someone out of the fight before it starts. He is unfortunately really weak to assassins like Fizz because if he gets dived on, he has no real way to escape. So how do you actually win on Zerath? Well, I kind of mentioned it already, but you farm early. You can roam if you want to, but make sure you aren't caught because you don't have any way to escape. Mid game is where you shine. So you poke whenever you can, you aim for the carries at the back and you make sure you poke before the fight starts to give yourself an advantage. So let's move on to the bot lane. And the first one we're gonna be looking at is the AD carry because obviously everyone knows the bot lane is mainly all about the AD carry. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be slightly biased there, but the one we're gonna be looking at is going to be Draven. Now Draven is really strong. He snowballs harder than anyone else in bot lane because of his passive. He does crazy damage in lane and mid game and actually has the ability to deal with tanks, which most ADs don't. One of the really cool things is that he actually demoralizes the enemy team when he gets kills because everyone knows you're cashing in on your passive and it actually puts a downer, it makes people tilt when he gets kills. Okay, yeah, so he has his passive which gets him gold, he has a lot of damage, he has his ultimate, he can kite really well with his W, he even has his E to kite with it as well. But what he's really weak to is just hard CC that stops him kiting. Like if you can stop him being able to kite you, then he's pretty much dead. Champions like Vi and Maokai, these point and click crowd control, are really good against Draven. And because Draven is quite hard mechanically, when he's under pressure like that, then it's very difficult for him to do any damage in team fights. So how do you win on Draven? Well, you farm early, you trade autos whenever you can because you'll pretty much always win an auto trade with your Q active. You try to cash in on your stacks eventually, you roam after you get your IE and Vamp Scepter, but make sure you're staying at the back of fights and letting people come to you. That's when you really thrive. Okay, so moving on to support, and if you guys have been following me for a while, this is going to be no surprise because I love this champion and I always think she's underrated, but we're going to be looking at Sona. Now, Sona has a really, really strong lane phase. She has a huge amount of poke and she has a huge amount of heal as well, which means that you can help bad ADs get through the lane phase. It's really easy to set up kills with your poke and then following it with an ultimate, and she can have a big impact in a team fight with her ultimate as well. The kind of problem with Sona is that any form of engage will ruin in her because she's very very fragile like she's gonna die instantly in a fight if she gets hit she doesn't actually do that much damage and she doesn't do much healing mid game so your real impact is gonna have to come from the lane phase when you're playing Sona, the things you want to keep in mind are that you really want to be poking early. You want to zone that enemy bot lane and get an advantage for yourself and give your AD basically a free lane to farm in. As soon as you get your ultimate, you can look for kills in your own lane. You can look to roam around and get kills in other lane. But make sure in team fights, you're either staying next to your back line or you're using your ult to engage. Those are the two things that you can really do in a team fight. So that wraps up my most underrated champions for this patch. But remember, there are actually loads of underrated champions right now that aren't being played very much but are really good remember to check out my may giveaway and enter that remember to check out my patreon and i'll catch you in my next video